Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and you most likely wonder what am I doing and the truth of the matter is that this is not a toy it's actually a racing car it is built in Germany in 1990 and it's called Koenig and it used to compete in Koenig uh, rallies or Koenig formulas as they call it so I was able to pick this up for a very very good price so this is going to be our next project. And this is the first video on this project. So are we going to go through the complete car and see what is wrong with it? We also go in to start it up and then see how things are working. The sticks have had their best time. Um, so we will have to replace those. In the front, I have a 165513. And the tires in the back are 235713. So really not big, 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 but more than good enough for this car. I have removed the air filter from the engine so we have a better look. Uh, the cover that goes over here uh, is missing. So this is something I will have to rebuild from scratch uh, to have all this closed up. But what you can see here is that we have four uh, carburetors fitted onto the engine block. Now this engine is actually a Kawasaki ZZ R1100. You're most likely going to say that 148 horsepower is not a lot of power. And certainly you're right in today's norms that is not a lot. Now this car is about 31 years old. But keep in mind that this car is very light. It's about 300 kilograms. Now that is my estimation. I haven't put it on the scale yet but I will certainly do so. Right here we have a big sprocket and a large chain and this chain is actually coming from the gearbox. The chain still looks quite all right. Um, it's not too tight. I think it's just about right. Uh, I probably will have to clean it all up and grease it. And then you see the drive shafts. There's one drive shaft here. There's another one going that way. I would think that the instrument cluster is a bit tacky. Uh, we'll see if it works or not. And it's very severe, but probably good enough. The steering wheel, well, that feels quite right. There's a bit of play on it. I'm not sure where the play is. We need to check that. But again, there's some funny pieces on here. So we have to check all that. And then we got the cockpit itself. The plastic seat, that still looks intact. I think somebody placed some foam in the back just uh, to make it a bit softer because normally that's just a plastic cup. That's all it is. Seat belts, well, I guess they will have to go because they are kind of worn. Uh, so normally it's a four point seat belt system. So we'll have to change this. And I also think the fire extinguisher system is uh, basically not working or there is none in this car actually. Well, we've got the speedometer and there's a nasty spider here on this plastic. We've got the RPMs uh, between zero and actually 12,000, which is revving in the red which is very high and a couple of other indicators on oil i guess and on neutral position this is most likely recovered from a, a motorbike uh, because the kawasaki um, zzr 1100 uh, is actually a motorbike it's the same engine so i wouldn't be surprised if they recovered the engine uh, from a motorbike and also took then the gauges with it why not and here's the stick shift with six gears and the polyester shell is in a pretty good shape. There's no cracks, there's no spiders, so no stress points. So uh, we'll take it off later and see um, what's underneath. And maybe we discover some pretty nasty things, who knows? All right, so um, let's give it a try and get it started. Well, there's no battery in the car, so uh, I'm gonna start it with an external battery and then see. Make sure they don't make any shorts. So let's turn on the battery and see what happens. Well, that's looking pretty good. I guess now we could try to get it started. All right, let's see. Fuel pump. Zero. Oh, this is quite nice. It's uh, 
very responsive um, and it sounds real nice. So let's see if we can take the front nose cone off because normally you would expect that underneath you have some reservoirs for your brake system and your clutch system. I don't know, most likely it's going to be there. Um, so let's undo this. Let's see if we can take this off. All right. That's indeed as we suspected. The chassis looks quite all right, uh, but there's a cable hanging here. I'm not sure what that cable is. It's been wrapped around. Um, typically you have two circuits for the brakes. They look in pretty bad shape if you ask me. It's a bit rusted, so uh, I don't even know if there's anything in it. If I can even open them up. It's tough to get it open. Oh, there's still some in it. Surprise, surprise. And I suspect this is the hydraulic oil for the clutch. And uh, they put a spanner on there because most likely the lid came off otherwise. Yeah, I don't know why people do this kind of crazy stuff sometimes. And that's the rack and pinion for the steering. And uh, that still looks quite clean. It looks very familiar to me. It almost looks like from an MG. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Let's see how much play there is on it. There's a bit of play on the, the steering wheel itself, um, but not actually. No, it must be the connection between the rod and the steering wheel. But this feels quite all right otherwise. It's pretty direct as well, and it, it has to be. So let's take off the rest of the polyester shell. And these are these quick release screws. And there's a couple of them. I'm not going to show you on how to release all of them. I'm going to try to lift it off uh, and see, but I'm on my own. I might as well have to do it this way. All right. Well, that worked. All right. I guess with two people, this is a lot easier than on your own. So the steel cable we notice in the front is actually coming from the uh, gas pedal. It's fed through all the way and it comes out right here. So I don't know why they left it that long. I would just cut it off. But okay. Um, there is an ID tag on this one. So the chassis is actually built by Formal Koenig. It's a motorsport uh, business and it's been built in 1990. And it's a serial number 378, which is the chassis number. Uh, and you might know Formal Koenig. Uh, this is also where Schumacher uh, became popular. That's good. So this is quite original. So we got the front adjustable shocks and I think they still look all right. Uh, we got one on the left and one on the right. The pedals are right here. Um, so you've got your throttle, you got your brake and you got your clutch. Well, this is the fire extinguisher. Um, I'm not going to have this right here. I'm going to have a automated fire extinguisher, both in the cockpit and in at the engine compartment. So whenever there is a fire, I can push the button and I'm going to extinguish the fire. Safety is very important if you start racing with these uh, old cars. For this, guys, I might need a bit of your help because I have no idea what that is. This seems like a big adjustment knob and it's going down with a steel cable all the way down to the uh, one of the brake cylinders. Very strange. I think it's some kind of an adjustment. I never came across something like this. Um, but then again, uh, this is not my expertise. So, uh, <laughs> pretty weird. Um, not sure what that is. We'll take it apart and figure it out. But Right now, I don't know, but if you guys know what it is, let me know. So before we were checking to play on the steering wheel, and we have a cross joint here, but I don't think it's happening here. There's another cross joint further down, which is more hard to show you, where I think things are a bit loose. And I think that the play we see is right here. See that bolt? 
<laughs> that ball doesn't even lose. That's where the play is. Now, that is bad because if that ball drops out, then you're out of control with this car. Racing is a lot of fun and it's affordable. You can buy a very cheap race car. This one was very cheap and you can get similar cars like this one for a very good price. But always take it apart before you take it to the track for the first time. Completely disassemble it. Check all the connections, check all the bolts, especially on the steering. You've seen how loose that bolt is. Can you imagine what would have happened if that bolt would have come out or that joint would have disconnected and you were doing like 120, 140 or 180 kilometers an hour? You would roll over guaranteed. You might be dead for all what I know. So safety is so important once you get onto the track. So make sure whatever you rebuild or you get that it's in tip top condition. And on this car, there's a lot to be done as you have seen so far, but I'm happy that I took it apart. So let's look a bit more in the back now, what's happening in the back. So here we have the radiator and this is a piece of art. Uh, it used to be a straight one, but then somehow they start cutting slits on the top and they started bending it. So now we have a bent um, radiator. Huh, very interesting. Um, I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to change this completely. I'm going to have two square radiators made that would fit in the frame here. I mean, a little bit backward, of course. And then connect all the hoses to it and uh, yeah, run it that way. So I would have one on the right and one on the left because that doesn't make sense. Uh, th this is ridiculous. Um, let me show you a, a shot from the other side on how that looks like. Look on how they actually built the radiator. It's amazing, isn't it? They really bend it in form. I mean, that efficiency is so poor. Um, they have a fan on it for sure, but I don't know, this is pretty weird. Um, this is not how I would install the radiator. So I'm, I'm gonna get all this changed. This is garbage. So far, we've seen a lot of good things on this car. We know the chassis is good. We know that the shell is good, all good stuff. The engine runs very smoothly, starts very quickly even. So I'm happy with all that. But we also saw some negative things. And uh, one serious thing was the steering wheel, uh, the steering rod, the joint there, that's dangerous. And then also the radiator was kind of an artwork. I'm gonna go to my local radiator shop and ask him to build me two square cores, high efficiency cores. Uh, of radiators uh, that I can then fit onto this engine. So I'm going to have one on each side and then have a tube between them. But I need to talk to him to see if that is doable or not. Uh, I don't know. I'm not too familiar with having a split radiator. Uh, maybe that's not such a good idea. I don't know. Um, I would expect that you would come in on one, come out on the top of the first one, then run it down to the top, the bottom of the second one and come back out on the top on the other one, something like that. So you have a longer cooling circuit. Um, maybe it's gonna to be too res resistant for the flow. I don't know. Uh, I'll figure that out with him and see how we're gonna do this. And for sure you will see this in one of the videos we're gonna make. Right, so now let's look at some other Mickey Mouse stuff that I came across. This is the expansion tank for the cooling and this hose on the bottom goes to the top of the radiator. And if this is getting filled over, then it flows over this tube here. And then <laughs> it gets into this bottle here, uh, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they did that. Uh, normally we just let it leak it out on the ground, but I guess here they wanted to have an extra reservoir so it can do it twice. So in other words, if this fills over, it gets into the white can here and then uh, when it cools down again, it can suck it back up. Uh, maybe what it means is that this expansion tank isn't big enough. So maybe I will consider installing a bigger expansion tank. And in, underneath, we got all of kind of electronic modules for the ignition um, and the ECU for the engine. So um, yeah, we'll have a closer look once we are working on that and cleaning all that up. Here we have the clutch and it's been activated by this push rod here, which is a hydraulic cylinder, which is controlled by the pedal uh, and the cylinder in the front of the car, which we looked at that looked a bit tacky before with the spanner on. Let me see if I can push it and see what happens here. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to give it a quick try, uh, see if we can bleed it. I have here a vacuum hose, which I will connect to that little uh, cylinder, and then with this little tool here, I can connect my shop air to this, and then I pull the trigger, and then it should start sucking out, of course, uh, that brake fluid, or hydraulic fluid in this case. But I don't see a lot coming out at all. Let me open that up. No, it's coming now. A little bit came. See? But it's not a lot then. No, now it's coming. Put some more in. So I think you might have um, fixed that issue. Am I using the wrong socket? No. All right, let's see if that is closed properly. Let's try it. Oh, now that is working. All right, so that problem is kind of fixed for now, but we'll come back to this and do a full inspection on that later. So let's check that rear drive line because I'm not sure if this is a closed or an open differential. It's hard to tell. Um, so. Yeah, I know, you need oil. All right, I'm going to pull on the chain just like the engine would be running and look, watch the wheels, what the wheels are doing. So both are moving in the forward direction, right? So now this car would be rolling forward. I'm gonna hold this one with my knee and then still rotate. Now, I got a rotation only on the right hand side wheel and this wheel on my side is blocked. Let me do it from the other side. I'm gonna let both run. Okay, I'm going to block the, the right-hand side wheel, and now the left-hand one is only running. So this is a standard differential. There is nothing special on this. Um, I thought it was a, uh, a closed one, but it isn't. That's good, because otherwise it would be very bad on the racetrack. So let's see if I can get the brakes to work. Um, but they are really stuck. I, I can't push it at all. So that is something we'll have to take completely apart because they are seized up. So I'm going to crank up the engine. I jacked up the car in the back. So now I'm going to try to start the car and then put it in gear and see if this clutch is working. All right, let's see if we can get this guy started. Let me see if I can put it in gear. Well. No, that gear is still not working. I can't get it in gear. Okay. Well, that wasn't very good. So that doesn't really work.
So it's very difficult to get the car into gear. Um, it's just because the clutch doesn't open up enough. So uh, we still will need to adjust this whole clutch system. So folks, we've come to the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And as you have seen, you can get a fairly cheap race car. And uh, there's a lot of work on it on this one, but it's still in a good shape. So the chassis is good, it isn't bent and that's so important. We can fix the steering, not a big deal. We can fix the brakes because that's just very simple stuff to, to fix. And we'll also fix the clutch, of course. Uh, these are minor things to do. Uh, and after that, uh, we'll take it to the track and do some testing. Now, I know some of you will say, Steve, why the hell do you start now this project? Because you haven't even finished Old Rusty yet. Yes, you're right. But Old Rusty is a long-term project. There's a lot of work on it. And I've been bending a lot of material, believe me. I've been bending steps and all that. And you, but you've seen all this before. I cannot make another video, three or four videos, on just bending metal. Um, once it becomes more interesting, which will be the blasting of the chassis outside and then the painting of that, and then actually welding up all the steps, uh, the side steps that is, then um, it's going to be more interesting for you to see. And then it's going to come. So I do work on Old Rusty, but there are just no videos on it because it's going to be pretty boring. All right. I'll see you in my next video. And if you have any information about these cars or that special thing here in the front, let me know because I'm eager to learn from you. Thank you for viewing and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.